in the road condition has got worse. You can see the tarmac is just cracked because of all the heat. Here we go. Now the fun begins. There's still quite a lot of danger, not just in the, the weather and the climate and the terrain, but also the fact that there's, well, basically bombs out there. Good morning from a sleepy Noadibau. I am currently about to drive 445 kilometers to Nukasho, which is the major city in Mauritania and by far the biggest city of a million people. I have decided that I am not in a rush, but I would really like to get to Dakar in Senegal. So over the next two days, we are going to drive approximately, I don't know approximately how many miles, I will put it on the screen at some point. But we are going to drive to Dakar. There are two things that are going to happen on this road trip. As our nine convoy with this Swiss guy who drives to Togo and he's done this journey before and he said that number one, you will drive on the most dangerous road in West Africa, which is down to Nukasho. He said the people are crazy, the visibility is poor and the road is terrible. And I was like, that's really nice to know. And also there's no help around for 400 miles. You are on your own. But then he said the last 60 miles, crossing into Senegal over a place called Diama is apparently one of the most beautiful roads in West Africa. So we are going to do them both over the course of this episode, so stay tuned and I will show you as much as I can and definitely anything interesting that happens. Goodbye Noadibu. And to be honest, I don't think I'd ever really come back. I think you could probably tell in last week's episode that I didn't really like it that much. It was very interesting but boy it's a very very difficult place to live I think but you can't like everywhere you go to and I think that's all part of travelling to be honest you some places you like some places you don't like this is just the way it is just about make out the longest train in the world it's two and a half thousand kilometers long carrying iron ore from the desert from the Sahara Desert to Nuadibu to um, it's one of their biggest businesses in Mauritania but look it's still going you can see like little goats on top of it there's people sat on it Okay, the real descent starts now. We have about 350 kilometers to do on this road. And again, it's another straight line. Um, I'm not sure how much more extreme the conditions are gonna get, but right now it's right now it's quite pleasant. The roads are, the road is pretty good. It feels like we're definitely going through the Sahara now. You can see the, the sandy banks and you can see the wind sweeping the, the sand across the road. So it's a nice, it's a pleasant experience. I'm hoping it kind of stays like this, but I have a feeling that maybe it's going to get a little bit more serious, but we will see. It's also really nice to be following someone for once. And it's kind of like a kind of like a safety blanket. If anything should go wrong on this road, then at least you've got someone that can either take you away from trouble or, you know, get you out of trouble. So that's good. It's very good. I mean, the road condition has got worse. You can see the tarmac. It just cracked because of all the heat. It's making it quite difficult to get any um, to get any sort of speed or cover any sort of distance. A local farmer. I also forgot to mention that this strip of land that I've just shown you behind me here. It's full of landmines, lots of um, still active landmines. I'm not sure who put them there. I think probably the French. And it's pretty unsafe to go off-roading that way. Not that I'd be able to in this van, but um, there's still quite a lot of danger, not just in the, the weather and the climate and the terrain, but also the fact that there's, well, basically bombs out there. So many tyres, just littered all over. I don't need that anymore, do I? I think that's what the majority of Mauritania actually looked like before uh, 
um, the French took over. It was very nomadic, as I was explaining in the last video, in the last episode, sorry. So you can see all the tiny little settlements and how the little communities would build in the desert, but it's only in recent history where towns like Noadibu and Nukasho have been formed and have been built. We are probably about two and a half hours away now, and apparently this second section of this road is better than the first, so that is good to know. Very good to know. Looks like we found the town that marks the, well, just over the halfway point. I'm not sure if we're going to stop and get some gas or not. I don't think I need it, to be honest, but there's, um, like most of my attending, there's not a lot going on. There's some goats in the road. There's some tyres, plenty of those. Uh, petrol station. And yeah, that's about it, really. I think we've got, I can tell you exactly how far we've got to go. We have... 248 kilometers to go until Nukasho. So I think the plan is just attack, 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 and keep going. No point stopping now because, as I've said before, this is the last place and probably the last country on earth that you want to break down in. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I definitely wouldn't want to get break down here. I don't know how. Do you know how you'd get out of it? Ah, there is a bit of life actually. There is stuff going on. There's a little market, stalls, people. Now ah, maybe you could get some th things fixed there. We definitely look like we're making progress now, not just in this particular journey, but throughout Africa. Look at the landscape, it's definitely changed. It looks redder. Looks like the, the earth is redder. Maybe that's my sunglasses on. Sure. No, it's definitely not as red as I thought it was. There's so much I want to show you on this journey, but I just can't show you all because it's such a fast drive. But this road is beautiful, it just cuts straight through the desert. Sahara Desert. We are now in Nukasho, the largest city in Mauritania. I am hot and I am sweaty and I am bothered because it was a very long drive. I felt like I drove my whole life. So we are going to go to a campsite now and relax. Good morning and welcome to the bathroom at the uh, campsite I'm in, in, just on the outskirts of Nukasho. Today we're going to drive to the Senegal and I just could not sleep. It's about half past five. I was getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, so next week I'm sure I'll have a nice malaria episode, but for now, yeah, I'm going to wait for the sun to rise and then we're going to set off and go direct to Dakar. Ah, uh, good morning again. Good morning again. I have finally woken up, I think. I'm starting to feel a little bit sick and I was actually worried that I had malaria, but I don't think it happened um, that quickly. But as you can see, we are on the descent about two hours south now to the border, well, to the place where you would cross into the Senegal. We have entered a place called the Sahel, which is widely regarded as one of the most dangerous terrains and places that you could possibly live on the planet, stretching from the south of Mauritania and the north of Senegal across through countries like Mali, Niger, the south of Chad, Libya, Sudan. It's an extremely dangerous place, not so much on the west side where I am now, but if you were to go this way, mainly because a lot of the land is hot, humid and dry with very little water sources and if you were to follow this directly as the crow flies, you would you'd come across some very dangerous places, you know, in the north of Burkina Faso and in charge you have mines and you have corruption you have islamic fundamentalists in Boko Haram it's um i imagine a very difficult and quite an unpleasant place to live in we are kind of hugging the coastline to the west so i think touch wood that there will be no trouble on this journey as we head towards the borders of senegal and hopefully we can get across today with um very little trouble 
Okay, we have just taken the right turn down to Jama and we've come off the main road over there. I think in a lot of cases, people follow the tarmac road down to Rosso. Um, and instead we've taken a right turn down to Diama. The road at the moment is fine, as you can see. But I do think it's meant to get a little bit trickier as we get further down this road. It's about 60 kilometers long. Um, I know that on this corner people get pestered quite a lot and get told to go to Rosso. They'll be like, no, it's not possible to drive down here. Because I think there is some sort of system where the police or the border control give money to the people on this corner for turning away tourists and cars because I know that there's a lot less corruption down the road we are taking but the payoff for that is that the road is a little bit more difficult but right now it seems okay but once it becomes um, more of an adventure we'll uh, pick back up the road has started I'm just trying to avoid potholes uh, quite badly as well I think <laughs> All good? Yeah, the monkey. Here we go. Now the fun begins. Senegal, there's some guys fishing just off the shore here. We are just driving on sand now. Just driving on sand. Whoa. And rubbish everywhere. I don't know if you can see from his van, but my van is just like shaking everywhere. See the animals, they're like warthogs. Look at that, like a mythical creature. Or a wee bit of an angle. Who lost this? Ah, bad day. This is just an insane experience. Boom. I think we've actually made it and that was without a doubt the craziest but the best driving experience of my life today but we are coming up to the border now the Mauritania Senegal border of Giamma I'm hoping that we can get through this quick and then we can get on our way to Dakar. I'm not sure how long that drive is, but um, yeah, we're here. Let's have a look. Oh, we've made it through the Senegal border and it was actually pretty uh, pain free because I didn't really do anything, I just followed. A Swiss friend who did everything for me, but I think I got an idea of how it works. I paid about 15 euros for the insurance, the visa was free, and yeah, it was, it was actually so easy. And you can tell already the people seem to be friendlier than I experienced in Mauritania, and I guess that's because it's more of a 
well developed country but now we are en route to San Luis it's a 45 minute drive so unless anything exciting happens on the way I'll pick back up when we get to San Luis I'll tell you what my first impressions of Senegal are, are great it's absolutely lovely it's lovely I mean it's it's a bit hot could be a little bit too hot at the moment but it is um, 1 p.m. That's a light, it's 3 p.m. But it's really nice, it's um, sort of good, it's got a calm vibe, the people are smiley. It just looks, it looks like a nice place to be and I'm really happy that um, I've made it here. And I love a palm tree, I love a palm tree. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, lovely people, we have made it to St. Louis in the Senegal. And I know there's been a lot of driving recently in my last few episodes, so next week we're definitely going to have a look around, try and meet some people, do some of the usual stuff. But for now, I think it's time for me to just acclimatize the country, to relax a little bit, get used to my surroundings, and yeah, you know, as always, be kind to yourselves, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.